Hello and welcome. My name is Halil Karma. I'm a senior peering advisor at Lynx, the London Internet Exchange. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how joining an IX and peering uh, can improve the overall network performance of a fintech or enterprise network. Uh, I'm going to talk about reducing latency, um, reaching cloud providers more directly, uh, and uh, improving overall costs. And also showing how a network can benefit from digitalization shift into peering for their network. Lynx was established in 1994 and is now one of the largest internet exchanges in the world. We're a not-for-profit, membership-owned organization, much like a bank or building society. Uh, we're one of the leading global IXs. Uh, we lead the way in innovation and uh, in terms of membership size as well. So, links in numbers. We have over 915 autonomous system numbers at Lynx. Uh, we're represented in 82 countries around the world. Um, 16 points of presence in London alone. And uh, we have three regional exchanges, so Manchester, Scotland, and Wales. Uh, outside of the UK, we have uh, our US exchange in Northern Virginia. We also have an exchange in Saudi Arabia, JEDIX, that's a partnership with STC. On our exchange, we do about 5.26 terabits of traffic roughly on average per second across the exchange, uh, with a total ingress capacity of around about 30 terabits. That includes our private interconnect product as well. What is peering? How can peering benefit my network? Public pairing has been around for many years, especially in Europe, where it's quite mature in the marketplace. Um, established for over 20 years now, uh, much like Lynx, I mean, pairing has been around since around about 1994. It's used by a large number of networks from huge CDNs such as Google and Akamai down to uh, very small startup ISPs and everything in between. We're essentially a shared layer two switching fabric um, which enables traffic to pass from point A to point B. Uh, Lynx is the meeting hub for networks. Networks connect using a single physical port. So, um, so as I mentioned on the earlier slide, our points of presence, uh, once you're located in one of those uh, facilities or a um, remote partner drops you off, um, from that single port or cross connect into the Lynx exchange, that will then enable you to peer with the 900 plus networks on our peering lab. Once connected to the network, it's just a case of passing traffic on a settlement free basis. And that's what makes our exchange so great. Um, each of our members are reliant on each other to pass traffic, um, which creates a tremendous ecosystem where our members are reliant on each other. Very effective way to keep traffic local, uh, which is the ethos that Lynx was born on. Um, Originally, Lynx was, was founded on the ethos that uh, traffic was tromboning from the States back to the UK. Lynx was formed to combat this and uh, keep traffic local within the UK. So traffic then started to flow from London to another city within the UK as opposed to tromboning back to the US. Um, this also helped in reducing latency massively. And uh, these are the key elements that, that Peering was founded on and still is still today. So building a Peering network fit for fintech and enterprise. Since 2015, we've seen an uptake in new members joining from the fintech world and enterprise FTSE 100 companies. There are several reasons behind this. Um, one that links is, as I mentioned earlier, one of the leading IXPs in the world. Uh, we have a large volume of traffic, uh, unique high value ASNs, and reliable infrastructure, which is quite appealing to the companies. Another need for companies joining links is to reduce latency, deliver a better service to external and internal users, reduce ongoing connectivity costs, minimize capital expenditure on networking as well as OPEX. And also a lot of consideration has come um, when networks migrate across to the cloud and how they're going to move this data traffic. A pattern that we've seen is companies usually go to the large cloud providers such as AWS and Azure and after they start to build quite a lot of traction and data towards a particular cloud provider, they then need to utilize this in terms of extraction or further uploading into the cloud. And this can become quite costly, uh, depending on the levels of data that you're working with. Joining an exchange and peering with the cloud provider that you're working with can really help in minimizing those costs and as well as delivering reduced latency in doing so. 
As links to neutral organization, our members like our transparency, as well as the fact that they can route and control their data and connectivity options. They could set up a BGP sessions with the path that they choose. Obviously, BGP will take the shortest route possible, um, but it gives them a lot more control than what they would receive from a transit provider. Another great aspect that enterprise and fintech customers like is that uh, Lynx is a one-stop shop. So once you connect into Lynx via a single cross-connect, uh, you have access to 900 plus networks via a single billing point. Now I'm going to walk you through what a current fintech enterprise network topology could look like from a transit perspective. As you could see, um, we have the end user, the financial institution or enterprise, the data center pop. So this would be um, the routes and switches wherever they're, they're located at. That is then connected over to the ISP that then reaches out to the public internet. From there, they would reach the cloud provider. Now in between the cloud provider and the public internet, the paths taken are not chosen by the ISP or the financial institution. It is chosen by the transit provider. And at this point, um, depending on whether or not they have a latency-based service um, or just want to provide a good end-to-end -end user experience, it really starts to become quite crucial on how you're going to control your network. The traffic that would then obviously trombone back and forth from the public internet over to the ISP, back over to the data center and the financial institution, and then to the end user. So there is quite a lot of hops happening there within that single click. Secondly, added to this, if you add on a cloud provider, that's another network that the transit provider then needs to connect to from that end. Obviously, um, express routes and things like that aren't accounted for within this diagram. If you take it from a perspective of going across the public internet to reach the cloud provider, um, you're just adding on another hop to an already elongated procurement process for your network. So what can peering do? From a peering perspective, your network will look a li little bit like this. Um, you've still got the end user and the financial institution. You've still got the data center pop in place. Um, obviously that won't change. All that would change is how you're connecting and breaking out to the internet from your pop. So you would, in theory, have a cross-connect from your pop over into the Lynx peering LAN, into London 1 and into London 2. This can be done simultaneously. Um, once that is achieved, obviously, you'll be able to get a third of the routing table from day one from our root servers alone. Added to that, you then have the 915 plus networks uh, that you can peer with. So in comparison to the uh, previous diagram where uh, the chain was quite elongated, this has dramatically dropped it. So you're now two to three hops away from your end network destination, as opposed to being three, four, five, or 10 hops away. Added to this, if you were to reach a cloud provider, because you're going as direct as possible via peering, a cloud provider um, would also be another layer to this. So you would go onto the peering land and then you would peer with, let's say, AWS. If you're looking to reach AWS, uh, you would peer them across the exchange via BGP session. This would then route to AWS, and then this would then um, route straight back to yourselves. And then back up to the pop, uh, the financial institution, and then the end user. As you can see, it's quite a shortened path compared to the previous example. And this delivers a low risk, secure, and highly available network for the end user. So as I mentioned earlier, cloud connectivity um, is also a predominant reason as to why FinTech and enterprise members join links. A potential network topology for a peering and cloud connectivity option could look like the following. Um, again, you have your end user and financial institution. Uh, from there, it would drop down to the pop. Um, so now this example um, is different to the one above. As you can see, the, uh, the green and black circle there goes into a Lynx multi-service port. So what a multi-service port is, is it enables you to connect to the peering LAN as well as a direct connection point into a cloud provider from a single port. Uh, just to break that down further, you could have a 10 gig multi-service port connected um, via a cross-connect from your pop. Five gig of that could be for um, London 1, two gig onto London two, and you would have a remaining three gig um, that you could plug into a 
cloud provider and have a direct uninterrupted route, um, let's say to AWS or Microsoft Azure, et cetera. This is done by offering a VLAN capability on the port to offer our members much more flexibility and to cater to their needs of reaching cloud providers much more directly. This also allows our members to take control of their network with transparent, customizable routing, whilst maintaining security and lower running costs. The benefits of joining links, the links ecosystem as such. So there are many benefits um, that, I, that I've already pointed out, but uh, a few more. Um, so the fact that we're a neutral nonprofit organization, uh, we're totally membership owned. So we have 900 plus members on the links network. Um, all of them own an individual slice of links. Um, regardless of the size of the organization, all organizations are treated equally and they all own the same share of links. So regardless if you're Google or you're a tiny ISP, um, you will still own the same shares and you'll be able to vote within the links community and have your voice heard. Uh, we have a very vibrant community of industry experts, really. We have some of the best networking minds in the globe, uh, the links members. And um, they're always happy to share their industry insights in improving traffic. Uh, we have a unique dual land peering infrastructure in London, uh, London 1 and London 2, uh, which I will come on to in our, our following slides. But as well as that, we have our regional exchanges, uh, Links Manchester, Links Scotland, Links Cardiff. And then outside of the UK, we have Links Nova in Northern Virginia and JEDAX in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. That's in partnership with STC, which is the first international exchange in the country. We also serve our members' regulatory interests and represent them by the Links Public Affairs team, who lobby on behalf of our members within government and the EU for internet policy. So if there is a policy that you wish to raise or debate about, um, Links Public Affairs can definitely assist with that. So a bit more on the technical side of, of joining Links. Um, well, by joining Links, you'll be able to reach about 85% of the global routing table. We have a root server that will provide round about 133,000 prefixes from day one. So a single peering session will give you 133,000 prefixes just from that single peering session alone. Additionally to that, you will then be able to peer directly with members of our exchange. So the 900 plus networks then come into play. Once you peer with the networks, you'll be able to reach round about 85% of the global routing table from that. We hold links member conferences. Um, so they're, they're great for networking, they're great for meeting new networks, creating new peers, um, great for creating business relationships. Um, so if there is a network that you're looking at peering with and they aren't responding to your peering requests, links can obviously help directly uh, by approaching the network and acting as a go-between, or we'll be able to introduce you to them at a links meeting. Being a member of Links also actually gives you uh, eligibility to key events such as uh, the European Peering Forum or the Global Peering Forum, known as EPF and GPF for short. Uh, the European Peering Forum is a great forum where all of the European IXs get together and host their members. They invite their members to the European Peering Forum, so it's a great mixture of networks from all over Europe sharing their expertise and what's happening within their markets locally. And likewise, much like the links membership meeting, it's a great way to network and meet new peers and discuss business relationships. We're a mutual membership organization where one member gets one vote, regardless of size. Um, many networks have joined links purely for increasing their uh, network, network prowess and uh, promoting their organization's profile. Networks from the Far East, um, many parts of the world that would like to grow their image um, within the, the peering community have done so by joining links and being able to reach our wider community within peering and the ecosystem. So if you could imagine a network in Taiwan, for example, they would peer locally at their exchange in Taiwan, um, but that would only give them entry into the local market. If they were lo looking for a global market and 82 countries, uh, they would come to links as one of the forerunners within the internet exchange world. And uh, as we said before, um, it, it gives a great opportunity to meet 900 plus networks worldwide.
which is really a, a great thing to do from a single cross connect into our pairing there. So there are multiple ways a network can join links. Either you could have a direct pop at one of the um, data centers that we are present in, um, so 16 across London, Manchester, Scotland, Cardiff, uh, Links Nova uh, over in Ashburn, or uh, JEDX in Jeddah. Um, so you could have a direct pop, and in which case that would mean that you would just get a simple cross connect. Um, let's say if you're at Telehouse, it's just a simple cross connect over to the Links pairing LAN, and voila, um, you're, you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, aside from that, obviously, you would require an AS number. Um, but uh, having an AS number and a cross connect into the links pairing LAN, that would get you um, ready and rolling, really, uh, to start passing traffic. If you don't have a pop in any of our links DCs or are uh, located somewhere in the world that links isn't present, um, as we said, we're in 82 countries, but we're only actually present in a few of those. Um, so how links members join links remotely is done through our uh, great partners. So we have many connections partners um, that have global pops. Um, some of our partners have two, 300 global pops all around the world. Uh, if you're looking to join from a, a remote location, they would be the best way of doing so, the most cost-effective way. Uh, and that, that would give you a great idea for how much traffic you have flowing towards links to or from links, in fact. Um, so what that offers is members could join, potential members, um, who are based, let's say, in Singapore. Um, links is not present in Singapore in terms of physical presence. Uh, you would get in touch with our, our connections partner, or we'll gladly put you in touch with them. Uh, they would be able to offer you a backbone connection from Singapore into London, across the VLAN, into the links peering lands. Um, Doing so, they, they can offer, because they own the background, they're able to offer you a large array of connectivity options ranging from 100 meg upwards to 500, 1 gig, multiple 10 gigs, depending on your network's needs. You can then assess the amount of traffic you have at links in London flowing towards Europe and then make a commercial decision as to whether or not a pop is viable and for you to make that CapEx investment in London. And again, if you do decide to make the CapEx investments, you would then need the back tail back into, let's say, Singapore again, um, obviously for the, the back haul of the traffic where our partners can also help. So the Links network, we've already touched on this a little bit, but I'd like to show you the network topology that we have. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, one of Links's unique features is that we operate a dual land strategy. Links was originally formed on London One, LOM1 is based on Juniper Networks with Junos software, and uh, London2 is Edgecore Networks and IP Infusion software. Both dual LANs are present in the same DCs, but they're physically separate. Um, this was done because our membership started to request uh, more resilience on the Lynx network many years ago. Um, so we thought instead of opening a, a separate exchange, we could mirror a secondary LAN in London at all of our sites. So that's 16 sites that Lynx is present in London, the Lon London 1 and a London 2 infrastructure. They're completely separate, giving added resilience to our membership. So this is the London 1 topology. As you can see, we're present in most of the large data centers across London, Telehouse, Equinix, Digital Realty, Interaction, Calls and versus his. London 2 mirrors the same network, um, but it's, as we said, it's completely separate physical infrastructure, but within the same sites. So why London? Um, why links, if you're thinking that? Um, why should I, I draw my network if I'm not already in the city? So London is a key global interconnection point. Um, we have the largest amount of data center footprints in the world, um, and the most amount of um, CapEx investments from data centers in the world so far. Uh, networks can connect. We have the most unique amount of ASs at links, and that is only available in London. We have a very strong financial presence in London um, with lots of banks and fintechs, as well as enterprise companies present within the UK, alongside New York and Singapore. 
And we're also geographically very well placed. So if you're looking at um, reaching the US, London's a great stopping point. If you're looking at coming from the US over across to Europe or Asia, London is likewise a, a great stepping point for your network. Uh, there is a lot of uh, investment in AI within London, uh, which may, you may be surprised to hear. Uh, the city has over 750 um, AI focused companies, which is great. And uh, it just goes to show that, that London really is a great hub a thriving ecosystem for, for tech. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about our Lynx regional exchanges. The first being Lynx Manchester. Lynx Manchester was launched after a series of discussions with local operators within the area. They wanted to keep traffic local and asked Lynx if we would create an exchange within the Manchester region to do so. Uh, this was voted amongst the membership, and after a series of consultations and discussions, um, the community decided that a peering land would make sense for Manchester. And that's how Lynx Manchester was born. Since then, uh, the exchange has grown to over 140 members. Um, there's a great mix of content providers, access networks, um, ISPs, all peering and getting great value from this site. As Lynx Manchester has 140 members, this makes it quite a large site. It's bigger than most standalone exchanges within um, smaller countries, actually. Um, if you look at parts of Eastern Europe, uh, parts of Asia, there aren't so many established IXs out there that have 140 plus ASs connected to their network. Um, so Lynx Manchester in its own right it is quite a large exchange. Lynx Manchester's network topology. Um, so we're in four sites at Lynx Manchester, uh, M247, uh, Equinix Jewel House, Equinix Williams House, and uh, newly established Toe Data Delta House site. So we could be reached at all of these locations and uh, doing so you'll be able to peer with the 140 Lynx ASNs that are there, or Lynx members should I say. This can all be done with a single cross connect as similarly done in London. Um, none of the link sites are connected to each other, so they are all standalone exchanges. This enables us to keep traffic local. Link Scotland. After two successful consultation meetings and plans to build an internet exchange in Scotland, uh, we were given the go-ahead by links in agreement with the Scottish Government in 2013 um, at the Polson South Guard Data Centre. This was a natural starting point uh, for a new IXP within Scotland. Uh, it was replicating the latest hardware that we'd used on our extreme peering land in London, um, enabling us to bring all of our uh, technical advances into the region. A second site was launched at the Data Vita data centre near Glasgow. Again, the same as many link sites, um, especially for Scotland in particular, um, it is not connected back to any other links peering land. It is a standalone exchange, meaning that traffic does not trombone back into London or Manchester from Scotland creating a better user experience for the people within the area. The Link Scotland network, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, looks a bit like this. So we're at State of Vita, uh, which is just near Glasgow there, and um, Pulsant South Gyal in Edinburgh. Uh, again, we can be reached at either of these sites with a single cross connect into the Link Scotland peering land. Link Wales. Originally established in 2015 as IX Cardiff, uh, Lynx is the fourth regional internet exchange point and was set up with the support of Cardiff City Council and the staff of the Welsh Government. Located in both BT Stadium House Cardiff and the new 2020 next generation data new port, Lynx Wales provides a peering solution that keeps traffic local for the area. Lynx Wales network topology. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, Lynx is at the Next Generation Data Center, or NGD, Newport, and uh, BT Stadium House in Cardiff. Lynx Nova. Following discussions with the US network community and its own members, Lynx launched an open peering exchange in North America. We saw that the region needed peering more so than many other parts of the US, and it made sense for Lynx to have its first international exchange within Ashburn due to the dense connectivity levels that are present within that data center hub. Since our launch in 2014, uh, we have over 50 ASs connected into Lynx Nova. Um, it's slowly starting to gain traction and become a larger formidable exchange in its own right. Uh, we have great content players present at 
links Nova, um, as well as ISPs, they're all benefiting from keeping traffic local and peering with each other. The links Nova network. Um, so links Nova's network looks a, a bit like this. So we're at uh, Evo Switch in Manassas, uh, Digital Realty in Ashburn, and Core Site in Reston. Again, we can be reached at all of these sites from single cross connect, and we are looking at um, a few other sites within the area to further expand the links footprint within Ashburn. JetX. So this was our first venture into the Middle East as an exchange, and also a first international internet exchange for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. FCC, Saudi Telecom Company, and Lynx. Uh, we partnered together to build an international exchange to draw in content players to the region. The area is very transit heavy and peering could be very beneficial for Middle Eastern networks. At Lynx, we saw this need in the marketplace together with STC. We want to accelerate the growth of this hub. Jeddah is located at the MENA gateway, um, which is a key gateway for landing cable landing stations going into Jeddah. We're very optimistic about our exchange in Saudi Arabia as there is a ever-growing need for peering within the region. So just a little on Lynx products and services. Um, what else do we offer? What else do we do as an organization? So aside from peering, which we specialize in, uh, we also offer co-location for any company that is looking to set up within a data center. Uh, we can assist with obviously co-locating your routers and switches within one of the data centers that we operate in. Uh, we offer a private interconnection service at our telehouse sites. So for an enterprise or a fintech customer, if you have a, a lot of traffic flowing to one particular network and you wanted that to be uninterrupted, directly connected across, much like an express route, um, that's essentially what our private interconnect product does. You can connect from network A to network B directly without any of the interference or going across the peering LAN to do so. We will also be able to offer uh, direct connectivity into cloud providers. Uh, this would be done through our multi-service port, where, as an example, as a, a FinTech member or enterprise member, we join links with a multi-service port. This port can then be broken up into essentially VLANs. So you would have, let's say, five gig of traffic across the pairing LAN, and then you could have one gig directly across over to AWS, and then you could have the remaining four gig of that port over to Microsoft Azure. This is a newly developed product that will enable our members to have a lot more choice and direct connectivity to the cloud and networks that they're trying to reach. So how to join links? It's quite simple really. All you need to do is be a legal entity and own an AS number, autonomous system number. Um, once you have that, you're pretty much ready to go and um, you'll be able to peer and speak BGP with our members. Uh, you have to choose a method of connection. So as I pointed out in the earlier slides, uh, that could either be through a direct connection, so a cross connect from a pop to the links bearing LAN, or a remote connection from one of our partners. Uh, once you're ready to apply, you just do it by the site, um, by the apply link on, on our website, and that will then go through into our system, and we'll be able to send you a links MOU in corporate form, but just need signing, sending back, uh, and then we'll obviously establish a, a billing relationship, and our provisioning team will be in touch to get your port into sandboxing and testing. Once testing is all done and uh, your port is, is ready to use, uh, you'll be able to speak BGP with other members and start passing traffic and peering. So some key contacts. For peering advice, you'll be able to reach us at joinhelp at links.net. Uh, member relations, this is our, our account managers that are responsible for our links members. If there's a particular peer you're looking at reaching, or any account questions, you'll be able to reach them at mrlinks.net. Our knock is 24 seven, and it's actually in-house. Uh, they're reachable via the email address there at supportlinks.net. I hope this has been insightful into the world of pairing. Feel free to reach out via any of the details below.